So in this video I'm going to try to break down or to simplify auto layout in Figma. So I'll start by an empty file and I will create a frame. And I'm going to put a couple of maybe rectangles inside the frame and maybe even text. Now let's say I want to put them in a very specific way. Let's say I want to have something like a menu. Maybe the, the name is here and these two boxes are next to each other. Let's say I decide that I want to have an equal distance between them. So maybe I can choose them and distribute the spacing equally between them. If the size of the frame changes, nothing is going to happen. These elements are not going to react to this, to the changes that happen to this frame. But why is that? If I select any of these elements, you can see these dotted lines. What are these lines? These are the constraints that they have. And by default, each element you create is going to be constrained, if you look at the design panel here, is going to be constrained to left and top. But left and top of what? Of the frame that this specific element is inside. So now this is the main frame that we have. And each one of those elements is constrained to left and top. So if the frame changes its size, they're going to stay left and top with the exact same distance. So the only way that I can make them react to the changes that happen in the frame is to change the constraints that they have. So let's say I want this one to remain left and top and I want this one to be top and center instead. And this one, I want it to be right and top. Now let's see what happens if I change the size of the frame. So this one is going to keep the same distance to the right and to the top. This one is going to keep the same distance to the left and to the top. And this one is going to keep the same distance to the top and it's going to remain at the center of the frame. But let's say I change my mind. I want these two to be closer together. What can I do now? where I want to change the way they are distributed inside the frame. I have to go to each individual element of these and change the constraints that they have. But there is a better way to do this, using auto layout. Let's select our main frame and let's turn it into an auto layout frame just by pressing on the plus icon next to the auto layout here. We can change the orientation of the elements with one click without having to select each single one of them and then move it around. It might not seem that bad to move things around when you have only three elements, but imagine that you have 30 elements. It's not going to be convenient to move each single one of them. All I need to do is go to the design panel, the auto layout options, and then change to vertical direction. When you have an auto layout frame, the items inside this auto layout frame must have equal spacing between them. If you want to change the spacing, you can just go in here and change the spacing between the elements that you have, no matter how many elements you have. Here is the padding around the items. The padding is the distance between the items and the frame. So I can set it to have equal padding and set this padding to, for example, 10. I can also change the individual padding around it. So let's say I want the top and bottom padding to be 40, but I want the left, the paddings to the right and to the left to be 100. Maybe I want this to be 70 for some reason. We can also change the alignment of the elements. Now you do not notice the changes that happen because our frame is set to hug contents. That means that it adapts to the size of the elements inside of it. We already have specific padding around them, so there is no space for them to move around when you change the alignment. But let's say I want to have a fixed width on my frame. All I need to do is just pull it down. Now you can see it changed from hot contents to fixed height. I can pull it to the right, and now it has also fixed width. So now, if I change the alignment of the elements, you can see I can bring them to the right side, I can bring them to the left side, up, down, center. They are now packed, I can make them to fill the space between them and they will also respect the padding. I want to add more text in here. So I can just press Command C and Command V and that's it, it just added the element. Just like that, Command C, Command V 
add in another element. It's getting crowded because it has a fixed width. So if I change it to hug contents, it will make space, adapt to the elements inside of it. Another thing you can do is that you can change the placement of the elements just by selecting it and using the arrow keys. Uh, you can also do it manually by grabbing it and just put it wherever you want. You can grab an element outside of the auto layout frame. You can grab an element inside the auto layout frame. Let's say I want to have the different distance between these three items than with the text. So I can select the three of them. I don't have the option to add an auto layout frame from here, but I can press Shift A to add an auto layout frame for them. And I can change the distance from 50. I can make it 20. If you look at the layers panel inside the main frame, we have two items. We have the rectangles and we have the text. So right now, this acts as just one element inside this frame. This is great, but let's look at a real life example of how you can apply this to a design that you're working on. So I will give you an example of a design that I already have where I used auto layout. Let's look at the design I have here. This is the design I talked about in the last video that I made. You can see like by looking at the icons, the main frame is a regular frame and then there's another regular frame inside it. And then we have everything inside of it. Almost everything is an auto layout. So inside this frame, there are two elements, the image and the content. And the content inside of it, there are three elements, footer, body and header. And each one of those has an auto layout inside it. So let's just look at the header. Let's say I want to recreate this header. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to write the text. Now let's give this text the same style as this one. So I'm just going to select this text, right click on it, and then I'm going to copy its properties. And then I'm going to select my text and then I'm going to paste and it will have the same properties as this text. This is just a regular text. It has no frame around it and I do not have the option of adding an auto layout frame. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to press Shift A. And I'm going to give the frame around it a color. So select the eyedropper tool and select this color and adjust the padding around it to 30. Too much. So 20. And it has rounded corners so let's give it rounded corners as well. Let's make it 20 and 30. Now it's 20 top and bottom and 30 left and right. Now let's add the names of the pages. So again, I'm going to select one of those pages and copy its properties. And then I will select my text and command V. Copy it, have another page and call it dev. This one is self. So I'll select these two pages and or text boxes and I will press Shift A to add an auto layout around them. I will call this new frame uh, Pages. It's an auto layout frame. And this button, I will call it Home Button. So now to add new pages, all I need to do is press Command C, Command V, Command C, Command V, Command C, Command V. So now we have Pages and we have Home Button. We want them to be inside one frame. So I will select both of them and then I will press Shift A to add yet another auto layout to them and I will call it header. So now if you look at the layers panel, we have pages and we have home button. Adjust the properties of the elements inside the header, which is home button and pages. I will go to the alignment and padding and center them and maybe the distance between them, I will make it 40. Give the header a background. So I will add a fill to it just to make it uh, more visible. And I'm going to add a padding around the elements of 20. Maybe I will also give it rounded corners. And that's how I created the header using auto layout. And here is the footer. It's made up of the social buttons and then it's made up of text. Let's start with the text. So I will put the text first. We have the social media buttons. I will just copy them, the individual buttons. So let's see what we have. We have text and then we have the Instagram icon and then we have YouTube icon. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is that I will select the Instagram and YouTube icons and add an auto layout around them because I want to manage the distance between them both. I'll make it 30 and I will call this frame uh, social. And then I will select this text, select the, the social auto layout frame and then I will add yet another auto layout frame by pressing shift a then i will center everything and let's say the distance will be 100 that's it i have a footer 